Hello, my name is AJ, and I just wanted to make this short video to present one argument for the early dating of the New Testament documents. In Matthew chapter 24, and verse 2, Jesus is speaking of the temple buildings when he says, You see all of these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. He said this shortly before his trial and execution at the hands of the Romans, and by shortly, I mean within one week of the event. Jesus was executed in, roughly, 30 AD. Now in 66 AD, following extensive political unrest in Judea, Jewish rebels managed to drive the Romans from the city of Jerusalem, and from 66 to 70 AD, Jerusalem was under Jewish control. Internal conflicts in the Jewish ranks left them weakened, and in 70 AD, the future Roman emperor Titus, son of Vespasian, besieged and conquered the city with the 5th, 10th, 12th, and 15th Roman legions. The walls of the temple were covered with gold and fine linen, and during the battle the place was inadvertently set ablaze, causing the gold on the walls to melt and seep in between the stones. The Roman commander wanted to bring the gold of the temple back to Rome as a tribute to his father, so he ordered the temple disassembled and the gold collected. Thus, Jesus' prophecy was very precisely fulfilled in 70 AD, about 40 years after the prophecy was made. It was the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av, on which day Jews and others to this day still mourn the destruction of the temple. In Hebrew, it is called Tisha B'Av, which simply means the ninth of Av. Now, what do we need to know about the temple? Well, it was, for most, the center of Jewish life. All Jewish men were required by God to present themselves at the temple three times a year, and all sacrifices were made at the temple. No sacrifice could, by law, be made anywhere else. The temple was, in every respect, the most important structure in all of Judea, on the most important hill, in the most important city. Yet the New Testament does not even mention the destruction of the temple. Why not? Well, let's suppose you go into a used bookstore and you find a book on the history of the city of New York. You read about how the city used to be called New Amsterdam. You read about how it was the capital of the United States before Washington, D.C. was constructed. You read about the Broadway plays, the Stock Exchange, the Yankees, and the Mets. But you come to the end of the book and find no mention of the fall of the World Trade Center Towers on September 11, 2001. What would you reasonably conclude? Well, it would be quite reasonable to assume that the book was completed, compiled, and published prior to that event. No history of New York City, written after 2001, would even consider omitting such an important detail. And yet, in the New Testament, we find no mention of the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. One additional detail to consider is this. If the Gospels were written after the fall of the temple, including the story of the fall, even a single sentence about it would affirm the prophecy Jesus gave in Matthew 24 and strengthen the story the apostles were telling. That is, they would have every possible reason to include that story and no reason at all to avoid it. It is then entirely reasonable to conclude that the Synoptic Gospels, that is, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, were all completed prior to that date. Similarly, Paul never mentions the fall of the temple in his epistles, but no one questions this because Paul died in 67 AD. All of Paul's epistles, obviously, were completed prior to his death, and so Paul doesn't mention the fall of the temple. But what about the Gospel of John? John's Gospel, it is widely believed, was written sometime during the last decade of the first century. Most scholars place it and the book of the Revelation at roughly 95 to 96 AD. So if the temple was so important, why didn't John mention it? If we look carefully at John's Gospel, we find it has an interesting quality. 
John chapter 6 verse 4 reads, Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. John chapter 7 verse 2 says, Now the Jews' feast of booths was at hand. What is telling about these two verses? These are not things one would say to a Jewish audience, because a Jewish audience would not need an explanation of what the Passover was, or that the Feast of Booths was a Jewish festival. These things would be part of their culture and very well known to all of them. It would be like saying to an American, Now the Christian holiday of Christmas was coming soon. We don't have to explain to an American that Christmas is a Christian holiday, because everyone already knows it. Now, by way of comparison, Matthew uses the word Jews five times in his Gospel. Mark uses it six times. Luke, only four. But John uses it 68 times in his Gospel. Why is this? Because the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written by Jews for Jews. John was not. John was written between 95 and 96 AD, and its audience was unfamiliar with Jewish culture and customs. John wrote his gospel on the island of Patmos, seen here. Now Israel is way over here, and John had traveled a very long way to get to where he was. The audience he was writing for was non-Jewish converts to Christianity, who would have had no knowledge or interest in the temple at all, since they were neither required to go there for either festivals or sacrifices. But, critics will say, John has written too late to be eyewitness material then. Church tradition tells us that John was the youngest of the apostles. Jesus' ministry is commonly believed to have been three years long, so if John was 15 when Jesus called him, he could have been 18 when Jesus died in 30 AD, meaning he would have been born somewhere around 12 AD. If he wrote his gospel in 96 AD, that means he would only have been 84 years old. Very old, to be certain, but definitely not an impossible age, even at that time. Polycarp, another church father, was born in 69 AD and lived until 155, roughly 86 years. But Polycarp didn't even die of old age. He was martyred. His last recorded words are these. Eighty and six years I have served him, and he has done me no wrong. How then can I blaspheme my king and savior? You threaten me with a fire that burns for a season and after a little while is quenched. But you are ignorant of the fire of everlasting punishment that is prepared for the wicked. This is one argument for the early dating of the New Testament documents. There are others, of course, including the testimony of the Church Fathers and the inclusion of these particular documents into the canon of the New Testament. But this argument is my favorite. And if the New Testament documents were written early, in the lifetimes of those who were eyewitnesses, possibly, and other than Luke, I believe surely, written by eyewitnesses, this means that they are more reliable than documents written later. You see, if I wrote an article now and stated that it was not two planes which hit the World Trade Center, but only one, there would be living eyewitnesses to correct me, and we can be sure that they would. But no documents exist today of any contemporaries of the gospel contradicting them. In fact, Jewish documents which exist from the time give confirmation, however backhanded, to not only the life of Jesus, but also to his miracles. Peace be unto you.